children's sermon, I guess. Looks like he's got help, so he volunteered so. Uh, I've got a few announcements for you today. Uh, a couple of them that aren't in here. Um, Luther Night 2023 is coming up. Uh, so Luther Night with the twins. And if you'd like to go to that game, there's a sign-up sheet out there. Uh, please sign up, even if you're thinking about going, I don't know if you can, but just so we can see if there's any interest in that. So we can keep planning that. And also, um, uh, if you're on vacation and uh, you see some postcards, grab some of those so that the women of the will use those and they send them out in the fall as part of their invitations for the uh, for the bazaar. So, bazaar, is that what we call it? Okay, yeah. Right. Um, also, the Lowell Schaefer Golf Classic, less than a month away. So, um, please sign up for that as well if you'd like. I see there's a couple teams on there already. Now next Sunday, and this one's not in the bulletin, after the service, we'll be having some training on the streaming back there, and, uh, and Joe will be here to do that too, so he, he fixed it a while back, so he'll train us and, and let us know how to use that, and we could use a few more members, so uh, we don't ever have to worry about somebody being here to run that, if you'd like to do that. And just because you go to the class doesn't mean you have to sign up and do it, but just so you know how it works. Also, this coming Saturday, there'll be a funeral here, and we could use two to three more people to help with serving, and two to three more to help with cleanup. And it's uh, it's not going to be a big funeral, so the work will be light and easy, I'm assured. So, and, uh, so, yeah, so if you could help with that, we would appreciate it. Uh, happy birthdays this week to John Knudsen and Gina Ba, and uh, anniversaries, we've got three this week. Drew and Rebecca, Nick and Jennifer, and Ryan and Peta. And so we wish all of them a happy anniversary as well. And uh, I think that's it. Anyone? Um, PBS starts August 6th. There's a sign-up sheet. Um, like, Jeez. Let's work in the weeks. So uh, the first one's on August 6th. teacher and a few other spots. Fourth, if fourth, fourth or sixth, that'll be the smallest class, so um, that would be great to so help out with that, but people always have yeah. Thank you, Pastor. If they're about being a Christian, we always have to <laughs> Okay, well why don't we begin with our first
truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
before me, since I appointed an ancient people. Let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from your old, from of old and declared it? And you are my witness. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 8. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation awaits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are we're saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Spirit. Confess our faith. 
faith in the Holy Spirit who intercedes for us. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, in the communion of saints, for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the Gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way that He calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, He daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, He will raise me and all the dead, and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. You may be seated. So, we're a little light on children, so I kind of borrowed some. So, if they would be willing to come forward and Sydney, and that's all for a little bit. <laughs> There's prices. I promise. <laughs> You can sit in the front if you want. Oh. I'm nicer than Andy. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah. Oh, we got one little one? Awesome. Me <laughs> too. So. <laughs> so, does anyone do any gardening? Anyone? A few people? Kind of. All right. So how do you like pulling weeds? It's your favorite, right? No? How about, do you like to help with shopping? Yeah, you like to help with shopping? Ooh. Have you ever wanted something and like begged your parents for it? And then you got to go. And then you find out it isn't as great as it was once said. No, it was great. It was great. <laughs> so, so you guys like chocolate. Hershey's big name in chocolate. You know. Have you ever begged your parents for a big spoonful of this? <laughs> no? No? Okay. So it's, it's not very good. There's a, a really fun video put out, I don't know, four or five years ago. It's a little kid who begged his parents to have a big bite because he recognized the logo on the tin, but he couldn't quite read what it said. And he takes a big old heaping spoonful, shoved his mouth, <laughs> and your face just said it all. <laughs> so, do you want to make some people? Yeah. You're, you're all smarter than the average people. Right? So, you have never, never done that. You've never accidentally eaten it as you were a little kid. No. So, that would be kind of choosing wrongly, right? You sit down and it's like, yeah, I think I really want this thing, or this is the right thing. And then it's not. It's kind of like if you've ever picked up textbooks at the college bookstore in a hurry and sleep deprived and get the wrong one. Trust me, I've done that more than once. But yet God never figures this out, you know, never makes the mistake of picking the wrong one. He always picks us at the right time. And he always gives us the right thing when we need it. Even if sometimes we don't want to do it. I think we can all agree with that. So and I'm not sure how I'm doing that. But, so yeah. Jesus is going to is, is gonna choose the right thing for us. God chooses the right thing for us all the time. Even when we maybe don't want to do that or, or think that, you know, it's something that we want and he doesn't want us to have, he will make the ultimate choice of whether we get that or not. Will you join me in prayer and the whole congregation? If they are willing. Dear Father, Dear Father, help us to love one another. Help us to love one another. And leave the judgment to you. And leave the judgment to you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So can you guys help out? You guys can split that whole pack. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> 
The band Audio Adrenaline did this back in the, I think, mid-90s with a song called Big House. The hook of the song was, it's a big, big house with lots and lots of room. It's a big, big table with lots and lots of food. It's a big, big yard where we can play football. It's my father's house. This version of a very large yard and a house with unlimited amounts of food and rooms is how the band used a known set of ideas to express what heaven will be look, may look like. Jesus used field out there, used a field and grain and the weeds as visuals to represent this kingdom of heaven and earth. Because the fields of grain and the weeds is something that the people of his time would have understood fully. They wouldn't have had to come up with new terms. And what does Jesus talk about the grains in his fields? He talks about how the owner of the field was planting known good seed. And at some point in the night, the owner's enemy comes in and puts a bunch of weeds alongside the good seed. When both sprout up and the servants see this, they're willing to go out and weed the field. But they're told to wait because the owner of that field knows that they were so similar that they might pick some of the good seed when taking out the weeds. And so that as they wait to pull the weeds until the differences are more noticeable and the weeds are to be collected and tied together in bundles and then burned. And then after all the weeds have been burned, then they go and harvest the good grain and bring it to the owner's barn. What's interesting is if you ever do a word study or if you're running your Bible up and you can switch between different uh, translations. The ESV uses the word weeds. Some of the others use uh, the word darnell. It's also known as false wheat. It's also really toxic to people if you eat it. And they look very, very similar, but they're different just enough to make so that it can really be poisonous to us. And then what visuals might Jesus use today was something I sat down and, and kind of pondered. You know, he might still use the farm field if you're in a more rural area. Or maybe he would use an HOA that has a perfectly manicured lawn. Maybe not this year. The rain's been a little sparse. But you know the, the lawns that look like golf courses, perfectly blooming the entire way across. And, and that one little five-year-old that's now a biotech just takes that one dandelion with a puffy head and blows all those little seeds all over someone's lawn, and now there's spots of yellow. For gardeners, Jesus, used might, Jesus might also use things like chives that looks like grass, zucchini that look like cucumbers, and watermelon versus grass and watermelons, or other things such as grass, catnip, or a host of other things. Jesus used these known visuals of the field to explain the kingdom of heaven because it was what his people could ask. And his disciples did something very interesting, at least in my mind. He asked, you know, they kind of look at him and go, what does this mean? Now, I don't think they were Lutheran in any way, but it seems like a very Lutheran question to ask. What does this mean? And why would they ask this? Because none of them were bought Mr. Farmers? Kind of. I mean, the known jobs of the disciples was a tax collector and some fishermen, from what is stated in the Gospels. And the Gospels are not about the disciples. They're about Jesus Christ. The parables throughout the Gospels can sometimes read like a coded text, and it leaves the readers asking, what does this mean? Even the disciples had to ask, to Jesus, can you explain this? The parable of the weeds in the field? The disciples had to ask Jesus to decode this message that he just told to a bunch of people out in a public area. And Jesus didn't just give him a decoder ring and say, you know, here's the secret code, drink more Ovaltine when you decode this. Instead, he gives them exactly what it means. And Jesus walks through the parable step by step on the parable of what of what the parable of the weeds means. Verse 37, the sower of the good seed is the son of man. That's Jesus. He says it several times. Jesus is both of these. Verse 38, the field is the world. 
They have the good seed, the wheat, is the people that are in the kingdom of heaven. That's us. And feast of verse 38, the weeds are the people that belong to the evil one. And the devil is the one who sowed those bad seeds. I think it's Genesis 3 that happens. The end of the age is the harvest. The end of the growing year is the eschaton. The workers are the angels. The weeds, the people of the devil, will be burned in the fire. That is the end of the age. This sounds a lot like what is written in Daniel 3 and in Matthew 3, verse 12. Verse 41 and 42, the Son of Man, Jesus, sends out his angels, and they weed out the causes of sin and all who do evil, throwing them into a blazing furnace, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I think that's in Revelation. The next verse tells us about what happens to everyone that is not evil or a cause of sin. They, suck, they will shine in the sun in the kingdom of the Father, and not the earthly Father, but God, their heavenly Father. And Jesus then says, Whoever has ears, let him hear. The parable of the weeds and explanation is not about teaching a bunch of guys about farming, agriculture, or agronomy. Instead, it is explaining what to expect in the eschaton. Jesus going through the world, looking at each person one by one, and seeing if they are good or bad seed. Just like God did during the first Passover in Exodus, God told his people to go, sacrifice a lamb, and use its blood to cover their doorways of where they lived. And this is how they were marked safe from that time. And we are still marked in a similar manner today. We are marked with the sound of our, the cross in holy baptism. We are also marked by the blood that was spilled by Jesus Christ, who is the holy lamb who was slain. And Jesus will be the judge of the end time to come. He passes by the good grain and the good people, removing only those that are the evil weeds. Jesus leaves the good and destroys the evil and bad ones. We are bombarded today about how human nature is trash, and this is seen on social media and people's nightly news. Some will even ask, how can creation be seen as good in God's eyes? And Jesus is, was, and always will be the good. He is the standard that stands as an example or standard of the perfect human. These standards are like how you measure standard of weights or measures. And if you ever sit and get into some of the really finite measuring, there's a whole thing about how to measure accurately with micrometers, calipers, and even finer things. One of the ways that these things get tested is by the accuracy to set those measures. But how can we measure if a person is good or bad? I don't think that the egg check from Willy Wonka and the chocolate factory is a real thing, but it would be really helpful. And Jesus knows what to look for in every aspect of finding the good in the people, picking out the bad, Jesus does say how he will do this in verse 39 to 42. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out from the, his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the furnace. Looking at the array of men that served as Jesus' disciples, they were not seen as good or righteous or even worthy. Early on in Jesus' ministry, he calls fishermen and a tax collector to work beside him. The fishermen probably didn't smell the greatest, and the tax collector would have been seen as the lowest of the low, taxing his own people. And when the Pharisees and the Sadducees saw this, they definitely did not expect it. Nicodemus even went to Jesus and asked the question, you know, and asked Jesus about this. Jesus knew how to distinguish between the good and the bad seed. And Jesus didn't just pick them up on a Sunday afternoon and then make them go out of the on a Monday. No, he showed them how to be disciples. He nurtured them, he taught them, and he encouraged them. Jesus even called out those 
that were still questioning in their own faith with Judas Iscariot and Peter. Well, what happens if someone wants to know if they are good or bad seed? Now, if anyone here has seen the Red Green Show on PBS, thank you, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Or if you've spent any time at the Systematics Department at Concordia Seminary, and if they have anything in common, it's that men have a hard time saying one small phrase. I don't know. <laughs> and we don't know who is good or bad, and the, the bad seed can change, because all things are possible with God. If we, we think about it, and they switch the hands on the, you know, the solas that we work through, sola fide, or faith alone, not the worst that we do, but our faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Son of Man and the Son of God who knows who is the good seed and the sheep of his pasture. The same Jesus that was able to make lame men walk and blind men see can also make those bad seeds into good ones. He was sent to relieve the believers of all their works that would have would have made a person worthy, but our belief in him is what truly makes us worthy. Because God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to save us, not to condemn the world, but to save it. Now, the grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ be with us. Protect the weak and the defenseless. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend you all who endure sickness and infirmity, especially those whom we now lay before you in our hearts. Deliver them according to your will, and strengthen and preserve their faith, that they may rejoice that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed in us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, you have called us according to your purpose. You cause all things to work together for our good. Keep us safe until that day when you gather us with the saints into your kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us what it means to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as if we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace as you serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.